Would you be surprised to hear that over 60% of life on Earth is so small that it can only be seen with a microscope? We call all of these little things microbes or microorganisms. There is estimated to be about 2 to 3 billion different species of these little guys. And the best thing? We can't live without them. Oxygen to breathe, food to eat, thank you microbes. They generate oxygen in the atmosphere and they fix nitrogen in our soils so that plants can grow, forming the base of our food chains. In this video, we're going to look at a few of them and what they do, both good and bad. Microorganisms divide into six main groups. Can you fill in the missing letters to work out what they are? Pause the video and have a think. Did you get them all? Protozoa are made up of a single cell. They are usually found in water bodies and soil and make up the backbone of many food webs by providing nutrients for other organisms to grow. I'm sure you've all come across fungi before. Those mushrooms on your pizza? Those are obviously big enough to see, but there are also many types of fungi that are too small to be seen by a naked eye, like some yeasts and molds. In fact, we have yeasts to thank for bread that rises and fermenting in some alcohol. On the downside, there are many types of fungi that cause diseases, like yeast infections in your body. Bacteria. These generally have a bad reputation, but it's actually rather unfair. Yes, some of them can be harmful, but lots of bacteria species are actually extremely beneficial. We have about 100 billion bacterial cells living on our skin alone and many, many more inside our digestive system. Smelly armpits, the odor is actually being produced by the bacteria that live there. We've spent the last 50 years trying to kill all bacteria, but we're now starting to understand more about good bacteria and the benefits they bring. They can help boost our immune system and aid digestion. Some bacterial species are even being investigated as producers of insulin to potentially replace insulin shots in the future. Are you a cheese lover? Thank bacteria. They are used in making cheese and yogurt. Bacteria are also used to create biogas in an anaerobic digesters. So they're providing us with a much greater alternative for fossil fuels. Fertile soils. Thank you bacteria. Plants need nitrogen to grow, but how does the nitrogen get into the soil? Of course, the answer is bacteria. They carry out a process called nitrogen fixation. So what are the limits to these wonderful microorganisms? Viruses, another word that makes us all think of bad things, but this time it's more fair than with bacteria. Maybe in the future, viruses will have some beneficial uses. I'll discuss in a little more detail at the end. The suspense, it's worth waiting for. Algae are another set of essential microbes occupying the bottom of the food chain. They are photosynthetic, meaning they take energy from the sun and release oxygen into the environment. Pretty important, as it means we can breathe and survive. They use the energy to produce carbohydrates, which form the base of many food chains. I bet you didn't know that algae-based ingredients also pop up in ice creams, salad dressings, drinks, lipsticks and toothpastes. 7 billion people, trillions of animals, how come the world isn't just one huge pile of dung? Of course, it's a wonderful community of microorganisms coming to the rescue. Microbes, mostly bacteria and fungi, carry out decomposition, which is the breakdown of organic matter, like dead organisms and material waste, into simpler substances which are then recycled back into the soil. The best news of all, microbes aren't limited to organic matter. They can eat almost anything, toxic waste, plastic, saving us from living on one huge dung pile. And I've even saved the best for last. Microbes could be the answer to our antibiotic crisis. They could be used to produce new antibiotics that are powerful enough to kill even the worst superbugs. In the past 50 years, all new antibiotics have come from bacteria living in the soil, pretty much in your backyard. Or maybe they'll replace antibiotics altogether. Scientists are trying to find ways to use viruses to kill bad bacteria instead of using antibiotics. I said earlier, we might yet find wonderful uses for viruses. So there we have the wonderful world of microbes. We absolutely could not survive without them. Yes, some do cause disease and illness, but they can also cure disease, produce oxygen, energy, and food. Please like and share our videos with your friends. If you have any questions that you want help with, just comment below.